Hello, this is Ken Gaggy, and welcome to the premiere episode of the IndieCider podcast, where we play indie games and then talk right to the developers who made them. If you're interested in just the audio version of this podcast, you can find that link in the video description, or if you just want to hear the interview, skip to 9 minutes and 26 seconds into this video. I'm here to play Gone for the Mac, also available for Windows. Not many options here to start with. Volume, leave it where it is, quit, and enter. So this game is about you being gone, plunged into a mind haunted by mental illness and unrest. These debilitating mental health afflictions make life into an uphill battle. Can you find your way back? Can you beat your demons? For educational use only. So this is the game that prompted me to actually launch this podcast. I had an idea for the format previously, after attending Boston Fig 2013. But this is the game that I thought, there's more to explore here than just doing Let's Plays. And I thought to myself, okay, this is a game where I could do a Let's Play, but it leaves so many more questions. It raises more questions than a Let's Play can answer. So it's a first-person perspective game. You can see there's a little bit of static on the screen. So you're not quite seeing things clearly. Uh, the reticule will highlight when there's something you can interact with. This room is rather spartan. There's a chandelier with some lighting effects there from the light on the wall there and there. And a statue of perhaps a woman, I suspect. But again, I can't interact with it. Can't open the windows. There's a door here and footsteps, but I can't open the door. There's another door over here though. And that one opens as soon as I approach it. And I'm going into a dungeon, which for a mental illness simulator is not a good idea. Are you feeling the weight of the world on your shoulders? All right, a little bit of a hiss in the background. Now there's some music. It looks like you have stumbled into a state of depression. You will feel trapped. Oh, OK. That went a little quickly. But OK, this is depression. And these guys do have the weight of the world on their shoulders. Kill yourself. Trapped. Depression. Give up. Stupid. Hopeless. Unwanted. Ugly. Freak. You are weak. Trapped and worthless. Now, these may seem cliche, but I know a lot of people who hear these words every day. Nobody's saying them to them, but they still hear them every day. And I think to a degree, many of us feel these ways at different points in our lives. And this is really challenging to hear them all being yelled at you at once. I mean, they may not be verbally spoken here, but this room is shouting. And there's no escape. I can't even see what's around this X except more corridor. So I can't get out that way. And all these pillars. It's not just the world, but the pillars on top of them as well. Can't move any faster than I am. In fact, my movement seems a little bit off, too. You don't... Whoa, whoa, wait. Oh, I thought I could see the exit, but I couldn't get out. So I am stuck here. Oh, what's that? My reticule lights up. I can interact with it somehow. Family album. Three generations of happy memories. I'm... Oh, just by picking it up. And now my movement is fine. The words are still there, but I seem better able to deal with them. And now the door opens. Oh, so I can go back upstairs, back into the main room, and nothing's changed. Doorsteps are still there. But now this door can open, and this is just a kitchen with a newspaper. And I can't seem to open the stove or the drawers or anything, toaster, wine bottle, vase, I don't know. Another newspaper, the towers, interesting. 
stuff on the fridge, A plus, to do, dry cleaners, dentist, groceries, call school, nice little drawing, and a calendar. Oop. Somebody's birthday on October 14th of this year, and probably every year. The 18th is the anniversary of something, Halloween, and doctor appointment. Okay. Oh, and a billboard. Looks like three different pictures, maybe. Back up a little bit there. There we go. Continue on to the next room. More footsteps. Some uh, tearing on the wallpaper. And now feeling anxious. I hear fire. I don't see fire, but I hear it. There's a demon there with a rope here. And if I get too close to it, what happens? Oh, okay, the reticule lights up, so I tap the mouse button. Oh! Q. So there is, is there something over there pulling the rope? I can't quite see. What happens if I don't... Oh. I died. If you don't push the button, you die. So it's like a quick time event. But you don't have to do the whole game over. It just puts you right back here. Uh, trying to get the aiming just right. There we go. Let's try this again. So I don't know what the symbolism is here. Q and J seem to be the keys to press. And that's it. And now he's gone. And now I can just walk across. You've won your battle with anxiety. If you've made it this far. Well, okay. I wasn't terribly anxious. It is 10 past 11 or so. Somebody's walking up the wall. I guess you would be walking up the wall or climbing the wall. Uh, rather a strange statue here. Ah! Jeez. Okay. Claw marks. That's discouraging. And now more of this, hmm, big hallway, lots of, whoa, what's happening? I'm not doing that. Ah, I'm not moving, it's just automatically moving. D, that's another quick time effect. You've survived post-traumatic stress disorder. So if I want, I could actually go back and explore this corridor now. But nothing opens, it's just decorative. Okay, so, whoa! Are you ready to come face to face with your demons? So that's the thing that was chasing me? Now what do I do? Do I like burn the rope or something? Don't give up, keep trying. Alright, just keep rushing it. I don't have a health meter, so I don't know how I could be dying if he hasn't killed me yet. Whoa, what is going on? I think he died. Oof. Congratulations! You have found your way back and are no longer lost. You have defeated your demons. Not everyone is as fortunate as you. Remember that we all need help to find our way back. Don't let them be gone forever. I hope they're referring to your friends, not your demons. Wow. So now we're going to be talking to Logan Harrington about what went into this game. Because there's a, a lot going on there. Thank you for playing. Thank you for making a very unusual game. There's more to be said about this, so let's say it. Great, so I'm going to do another run-through of Gone, but now joining me for this run-through is Logan Harrington. Hi, Logan. Hello. So I just finished the game, and there were a whole bunch of names in the credits, but yours came first. What was your role in creating Gone? I was actually um, the designer, the original creator. I came up with the idea of the game. Um, I found another student to help me out, and then later two more students. And I was the pretty much the creator, and I wrote most of it, and I did almost all of the art. Wow. So you, you mentioned some other students. Was this a school project? Yep. This was a senior project at WPI, and I worked with an animator, uh, a composer, and then a programmer. Excellent. WPI is my own alma mater. Nice. Now, so this would have been your MQP? 
Yes. Your major qualifying project. And you were in the interactive media and game design major? Yep. Excellent. They didn't have that when I was there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so what made you think to make a mental illness simulator? Uh, it's always something that I've had an idea for, and I never really knew how to make it or how to approach it, but I had the idea of hey, maybe I can do this for my my final game, my senior project, so I decided to go for it, and I found a student that also really wanted to to work on it. So that's pretty much how it started, is I just had the idea for a long time. I've known a lot of people that went through mental illnesses, and I thought that it might be a really good idea to make a game that shows people what it's like to live with a mental health affliction, and hopefully people will understand um, how they live their lives. So is this game part of a genre known as empathy games? I would say so, yeah. It fits pretty well in that genre. And is that a subgenre of serious games? Uh, yeah, I think, I think so. That, that makes about sense. So how did you choose which three mental illnesses to portray in this game? Depression was definitely supposed to be in it. Um, I guess you could say that... I'm not really sure. I know a lot of people who went through depression, so it was definitely the number one choice for us to do. And it was actually pretty easy to come up with a metaphor or a room of how to simulate it. So we went with that, and then we decided we had actually a list of several mental illnesses, and we went through it and we tried to figure out well, what would be a good simulation idea. How could we, how could we translate this into like a physical space? And anxiety seemed to be another one that it was pretty easy to actually simulate. We talked to a therapist at the school who gave us a pretty good sim um, metaphor for the pulling of the rope. So we went with that idea and we actually built that into our game and we worked off his idea. And then um, post-traumatic stress disorder is also uh, a big disease that a lot of people have. So we decided to work with that idea as well. And we worked with um, another psychology student who was kind of a consultant for a game and a few of the therapists and counselors at WPI who helped us come up with a simulation idea or design for what it would kind of feel like to have post-traumatic stress disorder and how to translate that into a situation or physical space. Now in the Dungeon of Depression, is it my imagination or are the controls a little wonky down here? Yeah, so one of the game mechanics was so the player moves a little slower, is a little bit more sluggish to kind of um, simulate the feeling how depression kind of keeps you down. Uh, you feel more sluggish, you're lazy, you don't want to get out of bed. It's kind of that feeling of um, kind of despair. And the way you get out of the dungeon is by picking up the album of family photos. Yes. What, what, it seems to me like most people I know who struggle with some sort of mental illness don't have the closest connections with their families. They seem actually pretty frustrated with them. Uh, so the idea behind the book of memories was that um, your family and your friends are actually a huge part of helping you through your mental illness. And I know they've definitely helped me. So the idea was that to reconnect with the outside world, you reconnect with your memories and your friends and your family. And that's kind of what the book represents is your, your reconnection with your life uh, before or maybe even during you suffered from this disease. Now, you mentioned you worked with some psychologists. What other kind of research did you do to figure out how to represent these mental illnesses? Uh, we talked to a bunch of um, different people to help formulate ideas. We talked to people who had the, the illnesses. We got some ideas from them, some feedback, a psychology student, some psychology professors, um, a bunch of... Um, therapists and consultants from the school. So we did quite a bit of research before we even dove into this project. We talked to as many people as we could. Hmm. Now, I, I just got out of the Dungeon of Depression. I'm back in the main antechamber, and I know, just noticed something I haven't noticed before, which is on one of the pillars. It looks like uh, somebody's measuring their height. Yes, I um, just put in a few touches into the house to make it feel like it's been lived in and to make the player have a sense of the... the there is someone, I guess, kind of living there. It's kind of little Easter eggs that you can find. I see. So the initials on these height marks, one of them is LH. That would be you? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And are the uh, are those your team members on this game or other family members? 
Uh, they're probably T members. I can't exactly remember what initials I put. It was a while ago. Yeah, I mean, they're, I figure if they were all relatives, they'd all end in H. And instead, we have S C C R. Gotcha. So, what is the purpose of these rooms that don't represent mental illnesses? So, the purpose of those rooms, they're, we refer to them as buffer rooms. They're rooms in between the others that um, have the mental illness simulation, and they're to kind of let the player explore and relax if they um, feel like they need to, so you don't go from one room to the other and feel overwhelmed. They're also to represent that not everyone is affected all the time by their mental illness. It's kind of an up and down. You have good days, now you have bad days, so it kind of represents that you still have this life to live, and sometimes you're not kind of dragged down all the time, but sometimes it's up and down. Gotcha. Now I see some pretty realistic touches, again, to make this place look like it's lived in. I see a copy of The Towers, which is WPI's school paper. Yep. And this looks like you gave yourself an A-plus on a paper on the fridge? Yeah, it's my IQP paper, actually. Oh, excellent. So that'd be like your junior thesis. Yeah. And then we have a calendar over here, and somebody has a birthday coming up. Yeah, I think I I was pretty much the sole person that worked on all the textures. So I got bored and decided, you know, I throw a bunch of stuff in there. So I think my birthday's on there. I put Halloween and then some random other things. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I didn't notice on my previous playthrough is there are a couple of clocks in the building, but they don't always show the same time. The one in the kitchen, it looks like it's quarter past seven, and then in the other one, it's more like 10.30. So does that represent how you can just lose time when you're challenging with these mental illnesses? Yeah, that's a pretty good representation, is you might not be able to tell exactly what time it is. It doesn't really matter the time, it just matters um, what's going on in your mind. Okay. Now in the... Whoops. I'm trying to open this door here. There we go. Now, so in the anxiety room, it almost looks like there's somebody pulling the rope at the other end. Is that right? Yep. And who, or what is that? Uh, so that's the first time the player really comes into contact with the demon that haunts the house, and he's pulling you towards the fire with the rope that you can't let go of. And um, it's the demon that you see later on in the game. Um, originally, we wanted the demon to be seen across, but um, because of time constraints, we couldn't get the demon's hands to sink properly with the rope, so the animation just doesn't look right. So to to fix it, to do like a, a really easy fix, we just made the smoke thicker, so it would be harder to see. That works. Yeah. So who would you say is your target audience for this game? Um, my target audience would definitely be people who might not necessarily suffer from these illnesses, but maybe know people who do suffer. Um, it could definitely be siblings of people who suffer, or maybe even parents. Um, it could even be people who have, don't even know anyone with this illness. The purpose of the game is so that the player kind of leaves with an understanding of how these people live their lives and the fact that there's nothing they can really do but continue to fight and fight until they reach a good day. What do people who have these illnesses think about this game? Have they played it? Yeah, we've definitely shown it to a couple people and they... I've heard several good things about how it really does represent what they go through. So it was um, pretty successful on my part. Um, I felt a pretty good sense of success that we worked really hard and we tried to get these as close as possible and people actually told us that they were a pretty good representation. Oh, good. Now in the post-traumatic stress disorder corridor, I mean that is a mental illness that I usually associate with uh, veterans who are coming back from war. Is it more commonplace than that? Uh, yeah, I think it, it's definitely more in military routes, but there are people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder who have never seen combat. It can really be anything from losing a relative to being through a traumatic experience that anyone can um, fall under post-traumatic stress disorder. Wow. Okay. Yeah, our original idea for the corridor was for it to be like a military simulation, but it proved to be too technically difficult, so we had to change our approach. So, tell me about the final room where I encounter the demon head-to-head. -head. What's that supposed to represent? The final room represents your sort of final battle with your disease, and it represents you facing your, your demons once and for all. And the 
point of the game mechanic is that you go up to the demon and it pushes you away and it says try again and don't give up or something along those lines and so if you try again three times in a row the monster will eventually die and this sort of represents that if you just don't give up and you just keep trying and trying and um, just keep going at it eventually you'll you'll be better and you'll you'll like live a better life that was certainly an optimistic interpretation I I mean I probably some people would say it's not that easy. Yeah, it's definitely not that easy. Uh, now, do you think that you might add more mental illnesses to the, a future version of this game? Will there be a future version? Um, as of right now, I don't have a team to help me. Uh, the team that I worked with is pretty much moved on. The animator is actually going to law school. And the programmer that worked with me, I think, is trying to find a full-time job or is going back to school. I'm not sure, but... Um, I'm not quite sure what the future of this game is. I would like to keep working on it, and if I do, I will definitely add more and more rooms and try to really refine what I have now. Any ideas what those rooms might represent? Um, I think the next ones on the list were, um, what's it called? Bipolar Disorder? Uh-huh. And then the next one could possibly be Anorexia. Oh, wow. That would be a, that would be a very powerful addition to this game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, one thing I was curious about, you know, this being a game where you're sort of wandering around a house in a first-person view, was the name of the game at all inspired by Gone Home? Actually, no. I've never played that game, and I didn't really know much about it when I made this. Um, the name Gone actually represents the state that a person is in when they're under the influence of their mental illness. They're kind of gone from the world. They don't function how they should. Their interests are gone. They, they're fatigued. They really just don't want to live their life. They're just gone. They're a different person. So that's really where the name comes from. And I've been asked that question a lot. And it's, um, it does, the, I, I will admit, the game does look very similar to Gone Home with its style and kind of environment. So I have been thinking about if I do continue this project, I might have to change the name. Yeah, if if for no other reason than SEO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. So you mentioned how your team has split up. What is it that you're doing nowadays? Um, nowadays, I'm going to start working for WPI, making simulations for online graduate courses. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So continuing with the educational theme, I notice in the corner of this game it says for educational use only. Does that mean I shouldn't be having fun playing it? Oh no, you can you can definitely play it. I think all that means is that um, I think that means I can't sell it unless I get the rights. From who? I think WPI. Cause technically, WPI owns it. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I think that's all I have to say about Gone. Is there anything that you wish I'd asked you? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Well, let's end on a light note. Tell me what you're playing these days. Uh, what I'm playing? Yeah. Uh, I haven't really gotten around to playing very many video games because I've been so busy. But, um, I've played Transistor, and Transistor is pretty awesome. Oh, I've heard wonderful things about that. Isn't that from the same team that made... Bastion. Yes, Bastion. Yeah, I think it's Super Giant Games. They're a pretty awesome studio. Excellent. Yeah, I loved Bastion. I'll have to go check out Transistor. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to everybody who watched this premiere episode of Indie Cider. Please subscribe to YouTube channel GameBits for more episodes as they air.